It's kind of like an end of day session, really, with just a little bit of intensity in the middle. It's a cycle that I do every couple of months. In one way or another, I tend to incorporate it into these sessions. And uh, the Virasana cycle. So it's based on a series of poses that are, uh, would be taught more typically in an Iyengar setting. However, we're not just going to do that. We're going to do some other practices as well. But at the end, we'll move into the Virasana cycle. I think they're a really good set of poses. I, I really value them. And often these things nowadays get left left out in lots of yoga classes. They they're not they don't really fit into the yin category. And they don't really fit into a dynamic class. They they don't really fit into those more practice categories that you find nowadays. So I consider them more sort of longer holding practices, but they're not really yin practices as such. So uh, you've done these before. They won't be uncommon, unfamiliar. Uh, and we'll come around that to that at the end. Okay. And we're going to start off lying down in the semi-supine position. That's what we're going to do to begin with. So I'm going to move all the way back. So you get all of my limbs in the camera. Let's take a bit of time, as we always do, in with a session with me to... I like to create a sort of still point before going into the practice where we just focus a bit and let go a bit of the day whatever that might mean, is changing, changing scenes, like in a theatre. So, you know, practice is a holistic practice, isn't it? What we're doing here in yoga is um, multi-layered. Just come down into semi supine, Rebecca, and just start off lying down, okay? And you probably don't need to be looking for the last, for the first few sessions, uh, sequences. And it would be useful to have a belt. I did mention this in the in the message today. So before we start, get your belt and have that close. So you haven't got to jump up and move around. It's always good when you start your practice to make sure you've got everything in place. <laughs> Uh, so that you're not having to jump up, jump up and jump up, run around finding things. Sort of breaks the pace for yourself, breaks the rhythm a bit of the practice. Yeah. So, I remember reading once years ago when I was getting to things spiritual. A teacher who used to talk talked about mindfulness, but I didn't really know it was mindfulness because I didn't have that concept in my in my being at that stage. But looking back in retrospect, it was mindfulness. And he used to say, "Look, if you're going to go sit down and eat a meal at a table." And you go to the fridge and take out the water and everything. Make sure you've got everything there before you start the meal so that you don't have to get up and break the whole rhythm of sitting down and eating the meal. Simple thing, but it, it sort of made sense to me somehow. So we're mindfully attending to our practice from the beginning in terms of what we need. Leaving outside the room for the time being what we don't need for now. So by way of connecting to the breathing, but just let the breathing be as it is for now. Let your mind settle around the breath. And let this settling around the breath be a mental practice as well. So you're engaging through your mind to the body. And as your mind calms down, you, you start somehow to become more sensitive and alive to the body. So you need to be, to some extent, quiet and receptive to really feel what's going on in the body or this connection between the body and the mind. Uh, we're going to bring this sensitivity into our practice as we begin shortly. Feeling the heart beating, the chest moving with the breath. Releasing any undue, unnecessary tension around the abdominal region. 
on the face and the eyes. So we don't need to overthink anything we're going to do in this practice session. There's no need to engage overly, overly intellectually, conceptually. Follow the instructions, follow your intuition, follow your own experience in the practice. We leave the thinking mind outside for the time being. So we're becoming more alive to the sensing of our body and the breath. In other words, more sensitive to it. So let's begin with some simple ground zero or group zero practice. So you're gonna raise your arms above and onto the floor behind you. And at the same time, raise the feet, projecting the feet upwards, bringing the legs to the vertical, reaching up and lowering the feet down and lowering the hands down simultaneously. Okay, just connecting this movement to the breath. It's important here to keep the whole back gently pressing to the floor. So engage the abdominal muscles lightly as you lift up the legs. As you lift up the legs, you find that your abdominal region disengages. But as you lower, there should be an engagement to keep the spine grounded. Yeah. Just touching the feet lightly and the hands lightly on the floor as you inhale, reaching up and reaching back again to the L shape. Exhaling floating down just touching lightly hands and feet inhaling legs to the vertical again keeping the arms lengthening towards the fingertips keeping the shoulder blades down and pressing up through the feet balls of the feet heels of the feet lifting as you lift exhale down okay there's four more times on the in-breath. So it's natural as we breathe out, we lower the legs, we engage the abdominal muscles to firm, stabilize the back on the floor. So we inhale, we lift the arms and legs and expand the belly. That's quite a natural movement with the diaphragm and the diaphragmatic movement. Do this uh, on the last time. We're going to maintain the position. So maintain the pose for another five breaths, lifting up. Palms of the hands looking up to the sky, broad finger base, and lengthening through the shoulders. So think of coming from the waist, through the hips, to the waist, to the sides of the body, through the shoulders. Without elevating your shoulder blades too much. So try and just move from lengthening rather than elevating. Lifting the shoulders, uh, sorry, lifting the hips, keeping the pelvis grounded, but lifting from the hips, through the thighs to the feet. And bringing your feet down on the floor and bringing the arms down out to the side. And then lifting your feet and bringing your knees in and hugging the knees. So take the hands around the front of the shins and make a ball out of the body. So you're lifting your head towards your knees. And then release feet to the floor. Arms go back behind you again, just as before. Hands facing up. Inhale. On your exhale, once again, make a ball out of the body. Lightly engaging the muscles of the arms to pull the knees in. Okay, inhaling, feet go to the floor, arms come back again. And one last time as we exhale, lifting the head and trunk. Squeezing the knees in, lifting the head up. Inhaling and letting the arms come out to the side in line with your shoulders. 
palms facing up, okay? So with your knees and your feet together now, just rolling your legs to the right side. One smooth movement. You can keep your feet on the floor or not, it's up to you. Keep your feet raised up if you want to. Grounding the shoulders and releasing the knees down to the floor. Turning the head to the opposite side if you've got space in the neck, otherwise looking up to the sky. So you can do some of this with the eyes closed if you want. It does help just to draw your attention more to the felt sense of what's going on in the pose. Huh? So you're internalizing your awareness. Come back to the center and roll your knees to the opposite side. Shifting your pelvis to the other side if you need to. One smooth movement, no hesitation. Turning the head to the opposite direction. We've got the rib cage and thoracic stabilized. And you've got the lower trunk rotating around. Okay, so you've got two opposing directions. As often in our yoga practice, we're working with opposing forces and directions. Okay, draw your legs back to the center. I'd like you to do that smoothly, softly. Draw your heels just a bit closer in towards your buttocks, keeping your knees together and your feet together. Once again, on the exhale, you're going to raise your body up and take the hands around the fronts of the shins, make a ball out of the body. Looking towards the knees, squeezing and holding there for a few more breaths. Where you get that sense of reducing the space between the face and the knees. Without straining the neck, of course. And then releasing the head down and then releasing the feet down to the floor. Maybe we're going to cross the left leg over the right leg. So as we would do for standing Garudasana, for example, okay? And then lower the lower foot down. So make your legs longer, even though you've got the left leg crossed over the right leg. Make the whole base longer. Okay, you're going to sweep out your arms to the height of the shoulders. And then bring your knees towards the right side. So you can take the right hand over if you feel like you need to onto the knee, just to press yourself into the twist a bit further. Keeping the thighs moving in towards each other. Squeezing the thighs together, gently. Breathing long down through the spine to the diaphragm. So now connect more, more concretely with the diaphragmatic breathing. Following the breath in and following the breath out. Easy to do in these simple poses. Easing into each posture very, very deliberately, being very aware of the different kinds of experiences in the body. Now come to the other side and do the same thing. So back to the center, bring your heels back in to start with. And then sweep your right leg over the left leg and then walk your bottom foot out and down so you lengthen the base again. Yeah. Don't worry so much about trying to hook the, the leg. It might easily happen so you can take the foot behind the calf, but don't force that because it's more demanding. And then rolling the knees to the left side. Left hand onto the knee if you want to. Yeah, grounding the thoracic area. Grounding the thoracic area, rotating the lumbar and the, the abdominal region rotating around the base. You can visualize or get a feeling for the bottom of the thoracic spine. And just the bottom couple of vertebrae will twist a little in that direction. Wow. 
So here, most of the thoracic stays where it is, but we're still moving from the base of the thoracic. The lumbar spine does a bit more twisting here than it normally does. Keep the attention in the spine and the breath. Okay, and bring in your legs back to the center. Roll in smoothly, carefully. And then walk your heel up towards the sacrum, up towards the coccyx, and then undo the legs. So that's just uh, easier to come out that way. So just walking the feet out to the, uh, the inner edge of the mat, taking the feet wider. Just reposition yourself so that your spine is in, in the middle of your pelvis and your pelvis is not thrown to one side or the other. Then I'd like you to, if you just let your hands slide inside the legs towards the feet, bring the feet towards the hands, you can then take the either the big toes or take the outside edge of the foot, whatever is easier to reach. Okay. So same principle here, we, we want to aim to ground the spine and that includes the, the uh, sacrum, that includes the sacroiliac joints, not lifting the pelvis. Keeping a nice sense of lengthening through the spine all the way to the crown of the head. And then we might want to open the knees wider. So I'm gonna let you work with this depending upon how much intensity you want to invite into the practice here. Yeah? Take the knees wider, Really make sure that you keep the spine grounded fully. And at some point you can start to raise the feet and widen the legs even further. Okay, so you may or may not end up with legs in an extended position. Okay. So just watch the temptation to raise the lumbar off the floor, even a little bit, keep grounding the pelvis and then pushing through or lengthening through the legs. And then taking them as wide as you can take them until we feel the obvious stretching in the inside area of the legs, near the groins, the gracilius, or the internal muscles. We might rotate the legs out slightly as well, which will just intensify and open, make the distance maximum between the origin and insertion of those muscles in the legs. See if you can bring the breath into the body really fully, breathing through the spine. Make sure that you don't cut off from the breath any stage in the practice. Broadening the feet, so bring in Astabanda, Padabanda. And right front, we can widen for the last few breaths even a little bit more. Gazing up to the sky. And then, okay, now bend your knees slightly and bring your legs back in. Yeah. And bring your feet to the floor with your heels fairly close towards the buttocks. And then I'd like you to reach out for your belt. So all these floor poses that we emphasize in the groups here have a lot of value for preparing us for the practice in different ways. So we're, first of all, just sort of grounding ourselves. Lying on the ground is like quite literally grounding yourself, isn't it? So you get the feeling of the ground beneath you through the trunk before coming onto the feet. Some people get a bit alienated up there on the feet if they don't first ground a bit. Now, extend out your arms and take the belt. Okay, so I quite like to do this myself with the arms lengthened, not with the elbows resting back on the floor like that. Okay, so I quite like to instruct it, practice it like that. <clears throat> I think it just gives a bit more integrity to the process of, of uh, working with the belt to have the arms lengthened. So just start with feeling your way into lengthening the back of the leg. 
pressing the foot into the belt gently. You're going to keep the left knee for the time being bent. Be aware of that leg as well. So bring that into your sphere of your awareness. And we're gently lengthening the spine. Okay, so the spine is not just passively lying on the floor, having a holiday. So we're letting the spine do its bit. So it's lengthening through the crown, gently actually lengthening. Okay. Now you're going to straighten out your left leg, reaching through the heel. So you engage the thigh of the left leg, rounding the legs. So just get that sense of maximum lengthening through the legs, first of all. And then you can work with bringing the foot gradually towards the head a little bit more, if you want to. Okay. And just hold that position because it's there are a big group of muscles and the connective tissue behind the back of the leg is very fibrous and thick sometimes problematic. Yeah, so it can be useful just to hold these stretches for longer. Get okay, a sense of lengthening as well from the inner outer groins, inner groin. There isn't really an outer groin, is there? The outer thigh. And bring the belt, both parts of the belt into the right hand. Ground your left arm. Okay, and turning your foot outwards, so rotating the toes outwards, first of all, and then bringing your leg down. As you bring your leg down, see if you can bring it down at a slight angle upwards, foot coming towards the head, turning the foot out. This, again, opens up the maximum space between the origin and insertion. Those muscles inside the legs. Keep engaging through the whole body. Okay? So an energetic lengthening. Stay connected to the breathing. What are the sensations that are arising in the body now? What do you feel immediately in your experience? Is that tolerable? Is that pleasant? Is it becoming pleasant? Is it becoming unpleasant? Is it somewhere in between? Okay, keeping the leg engaged and lengthening, bring the leg back up to the center midline, across the midline. So we're going to rotate the leg inwards as we take the leg across the midline, belt in the left hand, right arm grounding. And then you're going to bring the leg across inwardly rotating. Try not to lift the pelvis, okay? so we don't want to return this even into a slight pelvic twist, as can happen. Okay, so you just focus on the outside of the, the leg, Grounding and grounding through the trunk, gazing upwards, soft gaze. So another area of the leg that can be problematic. The outside of the leg. Now release the knee gently and bring your leg back to the center. Unhook the belt. Take your right foot on the floor and if you like to bring up your left leg, take your belt under your left foot. Again, lengthening your arms, keeping the shoulders, elbows in and shoulder blades tucked down. Okay. And then, first of all, to the vertical, lengthening. Whole spine is also engaged. Remember, we're gently lengthening the spine to the crown as well. So, spine is reflecting what the legs are actively doing.
And then we're going to start to turn that leg out. So rotate it out from the hip to the left side. Extend your right leg down on the floor. Round the right arm. And then in your own time, lowering out and down. Yeah, so this is my second time today doing this practice, and it feels a lot better now than it did the first one this morning. All the way down towards the floor, rotating all of the way. Okay, so don't hesitate on rotating the hip out. See if you can bring the foot higher. Keep grounding, keep breathing long along the spine. Give a broad awareness of your breath and the body, all the different parts of the body working together. And bringing the leg back up again, one smooth movement towards the center across the midline, belt into the other hand, around the left arm, and rotating the leg inward slightly. The reason we're doing that is that we're interested in maximizing the distance between origin and insertion. So rotating the leg in, to some extent activates the area around the outside of the leg iliotibial band. When you get fatigued in the muscles at the top of the thigh there, just don't rotate so strongly inwards, yeah? Because what you're doing is you're probably overworking the inward rotation. So if you find suddenly you're getting a slight achy cramp feeling, rotate the leg out again slightly. Grounding and breathing. Awareness in the body. Another five breaths. All right, now come across smoothly. Under your belt. I'd like you to bring your feet onto the floor. <clears throat> You've got to pause for 10 breaths with the hands resting just beneath the navel, middle fingers touching lightly, the elbows resting on the floor. And keep your feet wide. Make sure everything's in position so that you're in the middle, trunk in the middle of the legs. Expanding the belly gently as we breathe in, fully and completely, and exhaling fully and completely. Two more breaths.
And we're going to roll onto our right side and come up into a sitting position from there. Yeah. <clears throat> Bring in your left leg behind your right leg, right leg in front. <clears throat> Bringing the knees fairly close together, don't have to be pushing into each other too hard. This, always, this will vary a lot depending upon your hip joints. Some people can easily bring their knees close in, and some people find that too difficult when it comes to forward bending. It falls too much on the, uh, the gluteus medius and the piriformis. So just by way of setup, I, I always think it's a good idea to draw the buttocks back as much as you can, plugging in with the, uh, the two bones of the hips at the bottom. So you feel like you're in contact with the floor directly through those bones. Yeah. Interlocking your fingers loosely and then pressing the hands forwards and on an in-breath, reaching up, very simple movement, elbows drawing in. You can let your kidneys drop in a little bit and forwards so that you create an arch in the spine, at the back of the spine, on the top of the spine, lifting up, but not through the shoulder blades. Okay, so keeping shoulder blades grounding down. Thumb drawing upwards, little finger drawing down, elbows drawing in. And then we're going to tilt from the pelvis. So really tilt from the pelvis here at this stage. Okay, keeping the kidneys forwards and in. So as long as you can, come down from the pelvis and then take the hands down wider than your shoulders. Pause there for a moment. We're looking somewhere in front of you on the floor, beyond the hands. And take another in-breath and you're going to look up to the sky on the in-breath just to re-clarify the length in the spine. And then we're going to come down to wherever we want to come down to, where we feel we're getting sufficient sense of stretching through the, the hip. So try and keep a sense of the, the weight of the pelvis drawing back, even though your trunk is forwards, even the coccyx moving downwards. And keeping the back broad. Okay, so back and chest broad and open, shoulders at the front broadening. So we're just avoiding the tendency here, which would be a natural tendency to roll in and roll down and cave in. So we're just encouraging here an openness through the upper back. Yeah. Broadening through the body. Now press your hands down and come back up to sitting. We're going to take one hand, so the right hand behind us and the left hand comes over the knee into a twist, a simple twist. And forward bend straight into a twist to the right side, grounding the pelvis and now lengthening the spine, so making the spine longer. Letting the spine grow up to the crown of the head. And then rotating to the other side, one smooth movement all the way to the left. No hesitation. Rounding the pelvis, lengthening the spine. So again, encourage yourself to maintain breadth and openness through the body. So the shoulders, shoulder blades.
and rotate back to the center. As you turn to the center, I'd like you to change your leg position a little. So you've got the other leg here. If you need to readjust the pelvis, sitting bones, buttocks, interlock the fingers. Once again, next in breath, one smooth movement, plugging into the ground through the pelvis. Elbows moving in gently, lifting up the thumbs. This is where your, your awareness is most naturally present in the pose. Where does it go? Does it go more to your physical sensation or does it go more to the somehow the inner state, the inner response to the pose? Keep that awareness alive. You're going to tilt the pelvis and come forwards with the hands. Just take a pause there. Dropping the weight back on the pelvis. Make sure you're not lifting the pelvis off of the ground. On the next in-breath, lifting the gaze up. And on the out-breath, you're going to lower yourself down. Yeah, smoothly. Forearms down or hands down. Okay. So we should naturally usually feel the intensity of the, the stretching of the hip move to the other side with the leg in front. Usually that's the most intense side, but not always, not always. So it will highlight really the state of the hips, uh, the outer rotators, the buttocks, piriformis. I'm just going to give this a bit of time, another five breaths. Okay, then walking in with your hands, coming up with the spine lengthening. Once again, very good, good. And then we're gonna to rotate to the right side again, simple twist. Long spine, rotate to the left side. One smooth movement. And around to the center. So I'm assuming you're sitting lengthways on your mat, facing the long edge, uh, the short edge. I'm just going to take a little vinyasa. I'm going to go onto all fours, more fours, into downward facing dog. And then from downward facing dog, we're going to walk forwards. I come to standing. Okay. 
So you can just, as I was talking about the other week, you can let your pelvis take its natural position, okay? So let the pelvis draw back slightly. No need to think about tucking the tailbone down and under. Observe how that does affect where your weight arrives on the feet, okay? So she could be more, a more balanced feeling on the feet and actually a more steady feeling on the feet by not tucking the tailbone under. It tends to throw us back onto the heels. Yeah. And then it allows us also to lift and open the chest, which is what we want. In anything that looks like a sun salutation, it involves a back bend. Why would you want to do something the opposite to allow that opening to take place? Yeah. So from here, sweeping the arms up, going to keep this fairly swift and loose. Don't worry too much about technique and form. Just think about movement, connection to the breath, exhale, come down. Especially in the right, left foot back, low lunge, bringing the opposite foot back, coming down to eight point of Bhujangasana. Inhale, keeping the elbows in, shoulders down. Exhale, downward facing dog. Looking forwards to the front of the mat, you're going to step your left foot forwards, high lunge, right foot forwards. Exhale, folding into the legs. Inhale, coming to standing on the in-breath. Sweeping the arms up and bringing the arms down by the side. On the next in-breath, sweep the arms up again. So you're going to go with each breath now. Exhaling, folding forwards. As we come forwards, we're going to step the right foot back. Knee down, looking forwards, heart looking forwards. Okay. Step your foot back, coming to the knees, into Bhujangasana. Looking forwards again with the heart, exhale. Chin in, downward facing dog. Looking forwards, step your right foot forwards, one long step. And then bring your left foot forwards. Exhale, folding into the legs. Inhale, on the next in-breath, back to standing. Sweeping the arms up and down by the side of the body. Good. Once again, in-breath, float the arms up. Arms looking in. Exhale, folding forwards over the hips. Hands down. Stepping the left foot back. And then your right foot back. Make one smooth movement. Just transitioning from one part of the sequence to the other, not stopping, not pausing. Downward facing dog. Take a breath or two or three and downward facing dog. Looking forward, stepping your left foot forwards, then your right foot, folding into your legs, letting go completely on the out breath. Use the in-breath to pick you back up. Carry yourself back up, arching the back gently. Look at the hands. Take the hands down by the side of the body. One last time, inhaling, raising the arms. Exhaling, folding forwards, really fully exhaling as you come forwards. You're going to step your right foot back. Knee down, looking forwards with the heart. Stepping your opposite foot back, all the way down again through the sequence. One last time, inhaling. Exhaling, lifting pelvis. We'll work in downward facing dog for a little bit longer. Spreading the bases of the hands and rooting down through the feet. You have the four corners of the feet broadening laterally and lengthening away from each other. Hands doing the same thing. Lengthening and broadening. Okay. If you pick up your gaze and look forwards to the front of the mat, you're going to step forward one leg, one foot, then the opposite foot. And then back to standing. Okay, I'm standing. Balancing on the left leg. You're going to bring up your right foot. 
And you know how to do this, so I'm going to need to instruct you. We're going to come into tree pose. So we're really rooting the right foot into the inside of the left leg. Okay. Gazing forward to find your balance. Firm standing leg, long spine, spine lengthening axially. Namaste, bringing the hands to the heart center. Broad elbows and broad, so the expression across the trunk is broad. As we press the hands lightly together, we rest our gaze and we rest our, our mind on the gaze. Get a feel for rooting down through the standing leg foot and then reaching up now if you want. And spreading your branches as it were above. Reaching down, reaching up. So firmly, but not fiercely. I've seen the foot into the thigh. This does help the stability a lot. It gives a stronger sense of the pose. Pay attention to your back and your pelvis. To namaste from namaste. Bringing the weight straight over onto the right side. Bring up your left foot. Rounding the foot, left foot into the right thigh, so sinking in, but not, not too fiercely, not aggressively. Hands to namaste at the heart center, to re clarify the sense of lateral breadth. Hands pressing together gently, broadening through the shoulders. And again, resting your mind and your gaze forwards. Awareness in the gaze, awareness in the breath. And as and when you want, you can extend the arms above you or not. It's up to you. You can reach up to the sky. That helps. Steady mind, steady posture, steady gaze, smooth breath. And we come back to Namaste from Namaste, back to standing. Very good. From the front of the mat now, <clears throat> come to the front of your mat, and I'm at the side of my mat. I'm not going to change the position of the mat for the minute. So, if you take your feet just a little bit wider than normal, so that you've got one foot placed underneath the hip joint each side, a lot wider than your pelvis, just inside your pelvis. Arms of the hands are going to face in towards each other, and on the in breath, you're going to sweep the arms forwards and up. One movement. And then exhale, bring the arms back down, one movement. Okay. So the palms are looking in towards the hips, arms are looking in towards each other. Inhale, sweeping up. And we're going to bend the knees and lower the pelvis down. So we're going to come down as far as we can. We can come all the way down so that we're squatting. Well and good. If not, come down as low as you can. Okay. Reaching up with the hands. Lifting the heart center, really lifting. That's it. Keep the shoulders back, pressing through the feet, standing up again, all the way back to standing. Release the arms down, looking at the hips. 
Then once again, on your next in breath, sweeping the arms up and then lowering the pelvis down, keeping the knees tracking over the ankles, lowering the pelvis all the way down, lifting the heart center, lifting the arms and then pressing up again, all the way up. Arms back down by the side of the body. Okay, bringing the feet closer together <clears throat> so that they're touching, if not just a bit, a bit of space between the big toe and the, the ankle. Okay, gazing forwards. On your in-breath, raise your shoulder blades up, roll your shoulders back and release the shoulders down. Okay. Do that a couple of times. So on the in-breath, raise the shoulder blades up, roll them back, release them down. Connecting to the grounding of the feet. And this time we're going to come to a more classic version of Ukatasana. So keeping the pelvis tucked under slightly here so that we activate more of the thighs. We're going to bend the knees and then sweep the arms forwards and above. If you want, you can come into the cactus position with the arms. It's up to you. And reaching up. So this is an occasion where we might want to focus on bringing the tailbone under more. Raising through the spine to activate the thighs more strongly. Looking forwards to the horizon or looking up to the sky. And releasing all the way down with the hands. Ukatasana to Uttanasana, folding into the legs. Okay, you can stay down there for a moment. You might want to open your feet up a little bit. Take a bit of space there. Lengthening the abdominal area as much as you can. Folding into the legs. Exhale. Release the head at the end of the neck. Good. Oh, time flies in these classes. Okay, so from here, we come back to standing again. So as we come up, think of the spine lengthening, knees bending and softening, gaze forwards and then up. Okay, one more standing thing over here. We're going to do two more, but we'll do one more. So you're going to step your left foot back, right foot forwards. A nice long stance between the feet. Okay. With your pelvis looking forward to the short edge of the mat. You're going to raise the arms and take them behind you. Just take the hands onto the elbows for this variation. Even if namaste comes easy to you. Okay. And just re-clarify really grounding the feet, pressing down or yielding. Yielding is a better word. Yielding to the ground. Activate the thighs. Lift up the heart center and look up. And then you're going to extend forwards. Okay, Extending forwards, bringing the body parallel to the floor. So grounding down from the base of the big toe. Think about the four corners of the feet. Four edges lengthening and broadening. And then you're going to, if you want to come down further, there's no imperative to do this, right? You can do this if you want or not. So keep your attention in the back leg. Keep your awareness in the whole body, but specifically the back leg. So the energy of the back leg supports the pose. And we're going to see if within the pose for the next eight breaths, we can calm the breath. So keep it long. So we can calm the breath. Is that possible? A smooth, steady, calm breath. Not agitated, not short, not gasping for air.
If you need to come up sooner, come up sooner, okay? Just setting our general length of time. A couple more breaths anyway. And then we're going to soften the front knee and keep pressing into the back foot, back leg, and inhale, come up. Okay, and I'm going to change positions. So bringing your forwards, back. Just release the arms for a moment. And then you can take the elbows the other way around. Yep, grounding the feet, engaging the thighs, lifting the heart and looking up. And extending forwards. So as you do that, you set the spine on alert so the spine becomes active. The muscles of the spine engage. And then coming parallel to the floor or releasing down. It's up to you. Yeah. And look for the sense of calm in the breath. And the agitation. Sinking your weight into the back leg through the back foot. Be very conscious of the back leg. A few more breaths. Okay. Softening the front knee, inhale up, you come again. Nice smooth movement, stepping forwards. And turn your palms to face forwards. Gazing to the horizon. Taking an in-breath, sweeping the arms up above us. On the out-breath, folding forwards. And we're going to just walk the, knee, uh, the feet back and kneel down. Okay, so you might want to use a belt, a block, foam block. So we're coming to a virasana or something that approximates virasana. Okay, so you can use use a block if you want. It's entirely up to you. Of course, it's entirely up to you. Let's just drawing the pelvis back slightly, and making sure that the, the feet are as close in as we can bring them, and the buttocks sit more or less just beneath the heels, yeah? between the heels, rather the inside edge of the buttock. And you're going to lock the fingers, interlace the fingers, and Stand forwards and sweep up one smooth movement. <clears throat> Each in breath, we see if we can grow a little bit longer through the spine, through the trunk, from the pelvis to the waist, sides of the body, front of the body, back of the body. And then we're going to tilt the pelvis forwards and the trunk forwards, keeping it long. Take the hands down onto the floor. You can then bring the palms of the hands together if you want and slide the ulnar part of the hand along the floor, the little finger side of the hand along the floor. So keep your pelvis as way back as far as you can towards the heels. And then see if you can bring some length into the trunk and eventually bring yourself down so that you're resting the head downwards. Okay. You can rest the forearms on the on the floor, or you can keep the hands actively extending forwards with the arms long. So it becomes more of a resting pose or more of an active pose, yeah.
working with the breathing, but gently because you can see the breathing is really compressed in this position. It's difficult to use the diaphragm effectively, but it's one of those poses that strengthens the diaphragm. Yeah. Okay, sliding the hands in, lifting the hands back up, long spine, interlacing the fingers again, reaching up. Okay, good. We're going to take the feet a little bit wider. So we, in a way, we're more in Vajrasana there, and Virasana. So we're going to take the knees and the feet a bit wider, so we truly slot the, the hips between. Okay, and you might want to use a block there, you might not, it's up to you. Um, no, we're not going to use any blocks for this. It gets too too fiddly. So interlocking the fingers again, rooting down through the pelvis as you lift up. Okay. Keep your feet grounding and your shins grounding as you tilt the pelvis. Come forwards. So the aim is to keep the pelvis as far back as you can, even as you bring the hands forwards. Okay, so you can separate the hands or you can keep the palms together. But this time I'd like you to keep the arms lengthening. Okay, so pelvis drawing back, trunk drawing forwards, head comes down. Keeping the elbows slightly lifting away from the floor, pressing in towards the head. Okay, lifting the head first, looking forward. So you're going to slide your hands in to the point where you can really sit back on the heels again and then lift the arms as soon as you can. Before lifting the arms, sit back, reaching up. Okay, good. Slide the hands forwards. We're going to come to downward facing dog. Just going to release the other legs out for a moment. Okay. And we're going to come down again. As we sit down, we're going to take the knees wider. Oh, so just being on the mat, because huh? you know what that's like. You're not on the mat. Okay. And just before sitting back, take your calf muscles and draw them out. That's helped to uh, pack down a bit more. So think about coming to a sub-maximal position, not an absolutely maximum position with the opening of the, of the hips. Keep it sort of 90%, 85-90%. And then just see if you can drop your weight back down comfortably. If not, you might need to use a block to prop you up a little bit. Yeah. Noticing the position of your pelvis. And rock backwards and forwards a little bit until you find the pelvis slightly leaning forwards, so the lumbar spine arches. And the chest lifts. So kidneys drawing in. And this helps the heart lift and open. And we're interlocking the fingers again. One last time. Sweeping the arms above us on the in-breath. And on the out breath, we're going to tilt forwards again from the pelvis. So it's harder to keep the pelvis back. So we're going to need to bring the hands down sooner. Arms of the hands together. You're going to slide the hands or walk them forwards, keeping the pelvis back, 
close as you can to the heels again. So it's harder to come down, but it's somewhat easier to keep the pelvis back once you're down. And then see if you can bring the heart forwards, draw the pelvis back as much as you can, and then rest the head down somewhere. Okay, we're going to bring our arms in halfway. So we can come back. So we're resting on the sides of the, uh, the small finger side of the forearm on the floor. And then turn the palms of the hands down. Okay. Looking forwards to the horizon. Okay, and we're going to push ourselves back up again. We're going to bring the knees in one at a time. And then I'd like you to come back into downward facing dog one last time. Well, we're going to walk your knees down. Walk the dog a little bit, just to release the knees. Any undue pressure in the hips and knees. Okay. All right, so we're going to come on to our back again. And I'd like you to do a... A simple seated, uh, sorry, line twist, any twist that you want to do. And then we're going to do one thing where we roll the mat, roll the mat up and lie back over the mat. We'll do that afterwards, okay? So any simple reclining yeah. twist you want to do. And switch into the other side if you haven't already. Mm.
Okay, and back into the center. Just before we lie back over the mat, just one time, I would like you to lift up your pelvis and come into the bridge pose. And draw your shoulder blades down and under as far as you can. Taking the hands down towards the heels and lifting up as high as you can. When you lift it up as high as you can, just going to remain there for a few breaths. And then on your next thing, raise the arms up and over. And as you raise the arms up and over onto the floor behind you, lower the spine down from the upper spine to the lower spine, to the pelvis, releasing the pelvis. And just pause there for a few breaths. Very good. Okay, so the last part of the snap practice is going to be to roll the mat over. Very, very simple. Probably done this a hundred million times. Well, not a hundred million times, but you've done it a lot of times. Poetic license there. Best to be on a on top of a carpet under your body or something that's not going to let cold get in. And then lie back in a way that you've got the mat across the mid back, mid, uh, the mid thoracic rather, just under the shoulder blades. Okay. So as you tip back, you feel that you get that very pleasant lift of the of the thoracic area. And the shoulders fall back onto the floor. Shoulder, the top of the shoulder blades fall back. And you shouldn't feel that somehow you're arriving in an awkward position that hurts the thoracic or the neck or anything else. And then I prefer to open my feet wide and take the arms out wide. So I'm a bit like a starfish in this position. Okay. And then the practice for the next five minutes is going to be one of just yielding yielding and being mindful of the four areas of our attention, four areas of our experience, the body, its sensations, okay, the body's position. And we're just gently Clearly attentive to the body in its position, the body and its experience of sensation. And if you want to turn the light on a bit more, we can become aware more specifically of pleasant sensation or unpleasant sensation. Or we can become even more aware of the movement of sensation in general. How, it, how it's something that doesn't have a static point where it stops, it's always a moving experience. And then you can brighten the light even more to notice how you are at an emotional level. Notice the content of thought or whether there are many or hardly any thoughts. Again, noticing how these thoughts move around us, not just in the head, but through the body as direct energetic experiences very often. And like everything in, inside of us and outside of us, it comes and goes. It's not something that's a static experience. You can't get hold of them. You can't grasp them. Or if you do grasp them, you, you make them into something that they're not in their, in their natural state. Yes. So thoughts are sort of a gathering up and manifestation of energy, conceptual images, words. Just let it all go. 
Let it all go. Noticing and just noticing whether the mind feels inspired, dull, tired, or energetic. What kind of mood lies behind your thoughts and emotions? Just experiencing, just being open. I'm going to suggest now that you you shift over uh, into Shavasana. We're not going to have time to meditate now because we've spent more time doing the uh, first part of the session. Okay, so come into Shavasana for a while, if you wish, if you want. I suggest you do. It's up to you. Otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna leave the session there. Okay, so once you're wherever you're gonna go. I will finish the session. I'll stop recording. So thank you very much to you for turning up. Hope that's been of some use. <laughs>